Large language models generate better responses when they have access to more data. And one of the best ways to give a large language model access to accurate, relevant data is to use a vector database. Luckily, you can do this right inside of Retool. Let's take a look at how that works. Inside your Retool account, click on Resources and then choose Retool Vectors. This is where we'll go ahead and create a new vector. We'll call this vector Acquico Transcripts because we'll say that we have a bunch of call transcripts that we want to store in a vector database for use in an AI query. Next, we have to choose our embedding model. The embedding model you choose can affect the performance and accuracy of your vector queries, so it's worth experimenting to see which one works best for your use case. For this example, we'll choose text embedding three small. Filter labels are an easy way to include or exclude certain vectors from an AI query. So for example, if we give this the Acme filter label, that means when we run an AI query that uses vectors, we can either decide to include all the transcripts from Acme code or exclude all those transcripts. Default metadata is any other data you want associated with your vector. So in this case, we might say that this vector is associated with the company of Acme Co. That makes it so that when this vector gets returned as part of a search, we can also ask for this metadata and allow us to more easily use additional information about a particular vector. And because we have our vector as a document, we will select document as the vector type. Let's go ahead and click on create. So now we need to upload our document. We can click on add document and upload file and we'll pick our transcript. And we can also add filter labels or metadata to the file as well. In this case, the same metadata that we included on the entire vector is also associated with the file. Let's go ahead and click on upload. And now this document is stored in our Acme code transcripts vector. You can also add content from the web by choosing the site URLs option when you're creating your vector. Once your vector is created, you can add URLs by including links in this list of links to crawl. If there's a particular set of links you want to exclude from your vector, you can add those to this list down here. Filter labels and default metadata work the exact same way as we've seen before. It's important to note, however, up here at the top, these rate limits on the crawler. If the web content you need to crawl exceeds these limits, you can still build a custom workflow to ingest this content. We'll take a look at how to do that in another video. Now that we have our vector data successfully stored, you might be wondering how we keep it up to date. For data that doesn't change that frequently, you can always manually remove a document from a vector and then add your updated document or recrawl your updated set of URLs. However, if you have data that's updated more frequently, like an S3 bucket full of PDFs or an entire space of documents in Confluence, you can create a workflow that automatically updates your vectors for you. We'll take a look at how to do this in a future video. And just like that, you have your data stored as a vector. In a future video, we'll take a look at how to use this data as context to make your AI queries even more powerful. See you next time.